Hello everyone. My name is Tanaji Patil and in this session we'll see runtime polymorphism in C++ that we are going to implement with virtual functions. Now, let us see what is meaning of polymorphism. Polymorphism means having many forms. So, we have single function name and uh, different implementations. So, in short we can say polymorphism means having many forms. Uh, polymorphism can be implemented by two different ways. One of the way is called as a early binding. Binding is process of matching the function call to its function definition. And when we say it is early binding, uh, another word for that is also called as a static binding or compile time polymorphism. There are two ways by which we can achieve this early binding. One way is by overloading the functions and another way is by overloading the operators. Second form of polymorphism is late binding which is also called as runtime polymorphism. Here we will match the function call with its function definition at a runtime and for this C++ provides facility of function overriding uh, with the virtual functions. Two very important key concepts especially related with polymorphism that comes with inheritance is number one function overriding in which what we do is the base class functions can be redefined in derived class. And second important part is base class pointer or reference variable can be used to point to the objects of derived class. The late binding can be achieved using virtual functions in C++. So, the keyword virtual is used for implementation of runtime polymorphism. So, these are all five points. Now, what is use of this? And for this, we will see one practical example of building some toy game like feature. Now, in this game, we will try to incorporate uh, multiple players and multiple weapons like pistol, knife, missile, etc. Each and everything will be implemented as a class. So, let us start with implementing class player. Now, in this class, we will simply take uh, one private data member called as name of the player and uh, let us write simple constructor, of course, parameterized constructor where we will pass the name of the player. So, this is a simple constructor. Now, this is a class player. Let us create object of this player p1 with some name. Now, in order to implement the weapon, let us say we want to implement weapon pistol. So, class pistol and I will just write one method here called as load features and in this method what I will do is I will just put one statement there like loading the features of pistol. Okay. Now, player want to make use of this weapon. So, in the class player, I will add one method called as load pistol and for that we will provide as an argument pointer to the pistol and in this matter we will just display the name of the player and we will load the features of the pistol. Let us call the same method by creating object of pistol. So, save this code compile this code using clang++ or g++ and run it. Here you will get like player is loading the features. Now, let us try to implement another weapon. I will simply copy and paste the same code and I will just replace pistol with knife. So, that another weapon called as knife with the same 
method load features and I will just modify the name of method. So, now I added new class. So, I need to load the features in player also. So, let me write the method load knife and for this method I will provide pointer of knife class and the same pointer will be used to load the features of that. Let us create another player say P2 with some name say Aditri and uh, for this player 2 I will try to load feature of another weapon by creating new object of knife. Okay. Now save it, compile it and run it. Now both the players are loading proper features. But problem with this approach is whenever we are implementing new weapon, we need to modify the class player. So, if for example, for a pistol, for a knife, we have separate methods called as a load pistol and load knife. Similarly, for example, if I implement one more, say missile, the problem is we need to modify player. So, the solution is let us write separate class called as class weapon in which I will simply copy and paste this load feature method where I will say loading the weapon features. And now this class weapon will become the base class for the pistol. So, class pistol public weapon similarly will modify class knife. So, knife is also having base class public weapon. Okay. And now in player, we will write only one method called as say load features which is override and we will pass the pointer of now weapon. Now, we already aware the base class pointer can hold or point to the address, uh, objects of derived class. So, here p1 dot load weapon and p2 dot load weapon, but we are passing separate objects like pistol and knife. Let us save this, compile this and run this and problem here is though I am using pistol and knife, it is loading just weapon features. And for that, just one small change is required that is the virtual. So, let us make this load feature method in the weapon as a virtual. Now, with this modification, program works properly. Now, let us see how compiler performs runtime resolution. Internally, compiler is making use of two data structures vptr and vtable. Let us see how it is used with some simple example. Now, in this example, you can see class base is there with two virtual functions. So, whenever this is compiled, compiler will create one vtable in which it will list out all the virtual functions. So, one by one it will check like for example, here function 1 is virtual function. So, that will be added to the v table. So, it holds the address function 2 is not virtual function. So, it will not be added there and function 3 is again virtual function. So, address of that is stored in v table. So, v table is a data structure which is only one per class. So, which will hold the address of virtual functions and there is a vptr that is virtual pointer which will point to the vtable. Now, let us write simple main in which what we will do is we just declare one pointer star b. Now, we will create object of base class with b is equal to new base. Now, internally what will happen is constructor of that is call, object is constructed and constructor will initialize vptr to point it to the vtable. Okay, so, there is link from vptr to vtable and now that is assigned to object b. Now, whenever you are making use of this pointer b to call any function, it will move to b then it will follow the vptr from vptr it will reach to vtable and from that it will get the address of function and that function will be invoked. 
Now let us see we have derived class in which again function 1 is O right here. So, whenever compiler came across this another class a V table for derived class also needs to be created. So, that will be created here function 1 it is virtual because that is coming from the base class. Okay. Function 2 is also inherited, but it is not virtual and function 3 is again virtual. Now, note the difference here, function 1 is redefined in derived class. So, address from derived class is taken and function 3 is not overridden. So, we are taking the same address from the base class. So, that is uh, the difference to note down here. Now, we need to modify the main code. So, in main now, what we will do is, we will have base class pointer and object of derived class is created. So, whenever we say new derived, derived object is created and now vptr is pointing to the v table of derived class. And whenever such a pointer say for example, b here is calling any function, now function 1, it will follow the b pointer, it reaches v p t r via v p t r. Now, we are properly going to v table of derived class and function 1 from derived class will be invoked. Though we have a pointer b, whose data type is base class, still it is calling the function from derived class. Now, there are certain rules for virtual functions. Now, the keyword virtual, it should be only used with declaration, not with the definition. We cannot have static functions as a virtual functions, because they are properties of class. Virtual functions cannot be friend function, that is rule number 3. Next, which is very important to achieve runtime polymorphism, virtual functions should be accessed using pointer or reference of base class. Next rule is the prototype of virtual function should be same in the base class as well as in the derived class including return type also and virtual functions are defined in base class and overridden in the derived class. But if it is not refined, redefined by derived class, base class version of function is used by the base class pointer. So, these are the rules for virtual functions. Thank you.